What's up, everybody? I'm Jesse. You're watching JLS Comics. Uh, this is episode two of Continuing the Conversation, a little thing that I figured I would start doing at least monthly. Um, do some whatever I picked up, back issues, uh, art, something comic book related, maybe share a story, uh, something like that. But it'll be just me. Uh, if you're watching this later as video on demand, it is a live uh, event, a live show. Um, so there is a live chat feed, and I'll be responding to people throughout that. Um, so if you hear me talking to somebody off on the side, it's because of the live chat. But what I hear is that there will be some, uh, possibly some new uh, features to where once the video becomes VOD, uh, it'll actually show the chat feed with it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, wait for a couple more people to come in. Um, so we have NES Master 80. Hey, how you doing? Uh, nice to have you here. I know this is kind of unannounced and uh, sort of impromptu, um, but if you didn't catch it, I was just saying that uh, I'll probably be doing something like this at least monthly. Uh, and Kat Ren, uh, the better half, as she says, and I agree, <laughs> of uh, of Rebel Cat. So uh, nice to have you here as well. So I have a, a few things to show you. Uh, I picked up some back issues, uh, a couple commissions. Uh, one that I got, I guess you could say, as part of a convention hall. And the one that I got in actually today that kind of prompted the idea to do another one of these. I haven't opened it yet. Still got my address. I actually know what that's my, my work address. You guys can go to my work address all you want. Um, and I also, I got some uh, original comic art to show you. So you guys let me know what you want to see first. Um, back issues, commissions, unboxing, original art. Um, and we'll just kind of take it from there. So, uh, hey, Biggie, how you doing? Um, nice to have you here as well. Uh, thanks for joining me, guys. I, I do appreciate it. Um, so we do have the show on Thursday. Uh, starting uh, 8.30-ish, <laughs> um, we always uh, kick off uh, probably like 8.35 or so, so it, it ends up being a little bit late, but you know what, it's, it's, it's fun. So, um, all right, okay, so we'll do the original, <laughs> um, no, please don't, um, the original comic art first, um, and that is by request of Katrin. Um Cool. So I went to uh, a show, uh, oh, I've gone to a couple of shows actually. Uh, one of them, it was a smaller convention. Uh, it was the first time. I uh, just kind of put on, I thought it was really cool, put on um, by the, the event hosts um, just to kind of give the, the local community and the kids there something that they could attend. Uh, a lot of the cons are like down in Miami, which is like a good, I don't know, 20, 30 miles away. And, you know, if people are not as well off as others maybe they can't travel or spend the money or buy that expensive ticket so i thought it was really cool that they put this together for the local community so that if they were interested they would have something um you know that they could access so i went to it in support of that and just to you know obviously i want to check out what they have and god my hair's a mess um so i didn't pick up a whole lot there but i did find these pages here which i thought were really cool um so I'll show these in a second. We have a poor man's comics here as well. Uh, nice to have you. What's good with you? Happy Tuesday to you. <laughs> and uh, Silver Age Dave. I love Silver Age Dave. Um, you guys, um, if you're not, I'm sure you are. Everybody says it. Sub each other up in the comments. Y'all have great channels, great content, great books. And you guys should be watching each other. All right. But after this. Um, so the first page I got, and I don't know if you'll be able to see. Actually, let me just take it out. I have them in here together with a board. So this one is the first one. Nice big splash page, right? So if you notice on the top, it actually says sample and Robin. This is uh, Tom Lyle pencils over uh, Scott Hanna inks. So the thing with this was it was actually... Um, Sort of, because they, they do a few different uh, sort of concepts for the pages, um, and this was one of them. Um, they ended up um, going with a different page. Here's um, kind of how it looks, if you can see that, um, without all the inking over it. Um, so there's that. Um, the page ended up being uh, the opening splash page for uh, Batgirl issue number 170. So that was this, and this is was made, um, the concept that came from um, the writer, he said, uh, make it look like 
it's Robin up there in the, but it's not. Uh, it's actually a character named Violet. Um, and this would have been, uh, if this page had been published, uh, her first appearance. So that was pretty cool. Um, I just like the idea that it was a big old, you know, splash page. So there's that. Um, and then the next page I got it for 10 bucks, right? 10 bucks. You can't beat that. I mean, come on. This page. This page here, hopefully there's not too much of a glare. It's not characters, it's panels, like a console. You know, not like a console, it is a console. Um, and this was the first um, page of Iron Man Bad Blood number one. This is Bob Layton, and he actually did sign it. Bob Layton signed it right there. Um, and I will show you guys what the final page looked like. Um if you can see it, I know it's kind of small just because of the way they do it there. Maybe I can blow it up a little bit. Hopefully that helps. Okay. So that's the page uh, with colors and inks all over it. And you get, you get the lettering and everything in there. So, you know, pretty cool signed Bob Layton original art um, for 10 bucks. I mean, you can't, you can't beat that. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. And it is another splash page thing there too. So, um, up here, it had like all the maps and stuff, and this is before. Let me see. This is before they had all that. I don't know if you can see better that way. Um, it just has um, like the legend perspective. Um, we wrote title over here, um, so that was pretty cool. Oh no, that was for all like where they wrote David Michelini and all the the um, the creative team here. This is the map. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Original comic art. So my, my collection of that is slowly, slowly growing. Um, okay, so NES, I had said to, to sub y'all up, each other up. Um, and NES said, don't sub him. He doesn't make content. So there you go. That's by his request. Um, <laughs> Silver Age Dave does. He, he definitely does. Uh, Doom 143 is here. What's up, brother? Mahalo's. Uh, to you. Uh, he says, congrats on 2K. And yes, that's actually something I wanted to talk about briefly as well. Um, I did. I After a couple years on YouTube, I have finally hit, uh, well, not finally, but um, I've hit uh, 2,000 subscribers. I think it's pretty awesome. Um, huge milestone. I never really thought I would get to that. Um, so I've been toying in my head with a, a giveaway or a contest or something like a 2k giveaway um the question of not doing it or doing it isn't i'm just trying to find out trying to figure out what exactly i can um you know give you guys that would be um you know sort of level with my appreciation for all you guys subbing up and staying subbed and kind of putting up with me for all these years here so um that will be coming soon it will be a 2k giveaway um, hopefully I'll have that, uh, kind of decided and finalized and up on, on the channel, um, in the next week or two, but yeah, two, 2000 subscribers. That's, that's pretty cool. Right. Um, you give away $2,000. Well, I could probably give you 2000. Um, what are those? Ethereum's? I don't know. Bitcoin, something like that. No. Um, yeah, ten, uh, NES, $10, both of those pages, they were 10 bucks each. So $20 for two big original comic art splash page things you can't go wrong there so all right do you guys want to see next uh, a commission you want me to unbox this other thing or see the back issues and the sign books so let me know what you guys want next and we'll go ahead and get those next buy a drink for everyone in the house is what silver age dave says you know what come over to my house open bar it's on me all right cheers um so um, I was commissioned. Okay. So we'll do this commission. Um, I was trying to find a more appropriate, um, you know, cause when I do a, a character a commission, I like the title of the book that's on the top, um, to see, uh, well, to match whatever the character is. So like if I had like, say, um, I don't know, I don't know somebody. If I had a Kingsman commission, I would want it to say Kingsman on the top, you know? So I wanted to get a magic commission. And uh, Billy Tucci was at the convention that I went to. Um, he was right next to um, Frank Thierry, uh, Amanda Connor, and Jimmy Palmiotti. So uh, they had this big old booth there. Um, but 
Uh, well, I'll just go ahead and show it before I start rambling on. Um, so I, I, you guys know I like Magic, uh, the character, Ilyano, um, one of the X-Men. Um, so I wanted that. Um, and I saw his price. And I'm like, yo, I got I got this. I wasn't planning on it, but I ended up with it. And um, it's this here. That's Magic uh, by Billy Tucci. And it's funny because there was actually a, um, and I have the pictures up on my Instagram. There was a cosplayer at the convention uh, dressed as Magic. And um, Billy was like, hey, did you see the magic that was walking around? Because he finally knew who I was talking about. Um, it wasn't she, so he's like, who is it? Um, but actually, he had a really, really nice uh, X-23 commission. I said to him, is that for sale? He says, no. I'm like, damn it. Um, but he said, hey, did you did you see that uh, that magic uh, cosplayer walking around? I said, yeah, yeah. Um, she looks really good. Um, so we ended up coming out of a panel, seeing her, uh, taking a picture of her, and using that picture of her as the the muse for this. So this is the the cosplayer here, and I have her as well up on my Instagram. Um, I, I made sure to put the two pictures together side by side, so that you could see the the comparison there. Like she's got the hair and everything, so uh, that's pretty cool. You know, cool story there. Um, I went to the com uh, the convention. It was a one day thing up in West Palm. You know, a good forty miles away, and. Um, had to kind of, you know, drive uh, to get there, which whatever. Um, nice drive. You know, West Palm is beautiful. You get the water and everything. You know, nice town. Um, but it was a one-day thing. Uh, it was a smaller convention, and it didn't have a whole lot of uh, comic book vendors. So I was kind of limited on that. They had a couple, like, 50 cents stuff. But what I did like was that they had uh, a really heavy focus on, I'm just going to go ahead and um, open this while I'm talking. Uh, a really heavy focus on comic book creators. So they had a ton of them. And, uh, oh, this is easy to open. And, um, actually, I want to show that too. Um, so they had uh, creators out, you know, um, you know, Artist Alley and everything. One of the reasons I want, I don't want to see it yet. I haven't seen it. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to go was Chris Claremont was supposed to be there. Chris Bocciolo was supposed to be there. Um, so obviously I had like New Mutant stuff, um, X-Men, things like that for them to sign. But unfortunately, uh, Chris Claremont um, canceled like pretty much at the last minute. Uh, same with Chris Bocciolo. So the the host of, of the event was like, damn, what am I going to do? Like shit. So he actually um, called Amanda Connor. And Jimmy Palmiotti, who lived just on the other side of Florida, a couple hours away, over in Tampa, um, to say, "Hey, I got this one day one day event. You get your guarantee. Uh, come over. I really need you to help me out. You know, save the day here." So they said, "Sure." So they ended up coming over. Um, so I got some stuff here. I'll show you guys uh, from Amanda, Jimmy, uh, Frank Thierry uh, is part of that group there, um, and Dave Johnson as well. Dave Johnson is really. He flies under the radar, but if you see his artwork, it's like, wow, that was really cool. Um, so I have a couple things from him to sign. Um, I don't know if you guys know. Yeah, right. It was really cool. They were able to do that. They did a panel. Um, they did all this stuff. And they were really cool, um, you know, to chat with, you know, to joke with and stuff. I was walking around with my camera. I haven't seen this yet, so you guys are going to see it before I do. Um, actually, there we go. Boom. How about that? There's another commission piece. That's um, Poison Ivy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's Harley Quinn. Um, and this is Ken Hazer. I actually ordered this um, a few months ago um, from Dynamic Forces. They had a really good sale on these. It's the Harley um, and Betty thing. Um, they had a Harley. They had um, Betty... Veronica and stuff, and I went with the Harley one. Um, Ken Hazer is their guy that they always get to do these. Um, so that was a few months back, right? Um, nice and simple. I like it. It's cool. The colors and all that, you know, it's good. I like it. I'm happy with it. Sweet. It's very um, sort of Paul Dini, isn't it? If you look at it, and you get Paul Dini down here, I thought that was pretty appropriate styling for her. Cool. I like it a lot. It's going up on my wall with my other stuff. So it's pretty cool. Very distinct styles, but I like these both quite a bit. Right? Nice. 
So, what was I talking about? The convention. All right. Oh, and there was this book. I spun a wheel or whatever. I picked the card and I got a book, sci-fi book. So whatever. He signed it inside. Got my name in there and all that good stuff. So that's cool. And then I saw this other guy. He gave me this. He just he was handing it out. And it reminded me of, um, oh, God, what's his name? Jamie Tyndall. He does this sort of like um, fake, um, you know, magazine cover thing. So that's cool. Wonder Woman. Boop. Um, all right. So I got the books left to show. Um, what were they talking about? The convention. Um, it was fun. It was a good time. Um, Witchblade Tomb Raider. This is issue half, The Wizard, and it's uh, Michael Turner. Can't go wrong with that, right? Um, I found this was like, I don't know, it was like a dollar or something, X-Men. This is the first appearance of somebody. I'm not quite sure who. Um, but I also got it with this one. I know there's a thing on it, but it was a book. So there you go. I'm filling out that air, that run in there. Um, one of the reasons I'm picking these up is because of um, X23 over here on the corner. She's on this one somewhere. Oh, down here. There she is. So the big one is um, like 460 or whatever. Not the big one, but like the most um, popular of those um, where she like finally meets and joins the team. That was 460. But she's on, a, the story goes a little bit before that. So she's on that um, beforehand. Um, this is cool. I found this for a dollar. I've been looking for this for a while. And it's funny because I found the next two um, like six months ago to a year ago. And I'm like, you know what? I'll probably find this one if I'm just patient and I wait. Um, and it was a dollar. So that's Batman 655. This is the regular cover one, but it's the first appearance of... Uh, Damian Wayne. So I was going, this was at the same, um, at the same uh, convention that I got the $10 um, commissions at. I said to the guy, you know, how much are these? He's like, you know what? I'm just trying to get rid of this box. And I asked him how much that book was. And his answer was, I'll sell you the box for 50 bucks. Like he was just trying to get rid of the stuff. Um, okay. So, the next two, I got to tell you, I didn't know really what it was until I got home and looked it up and stuff and kind of looked at it a little bit closer. I got it first because it's uh, Josh Middleton, right? You, you can't go wrong with Middleton. So this is Supergirl. This is a really beautiful cover. And it's the issue what? Issue 36. This came out in 2009. Check it. Right? beautiful but i gotta tell you guys something here this is if it'll focus kind of anyways this is a newsstand a newsstand copy so i know everybody loves their variants you know the the european variants are getting really popular right now um one of the things that I think that people should be looking for, they're easy to miss, but super rare. Um, and it's a very good um, niche uh, sort of part of the market, uh, the hobby that is, is uh, the late uh, 2000 newsstands. So I think it was about 1979 when, um, you know, the, uh, the direct market uh, started coming along. There was a good, you know, there was a couple hundred of all these regional distributors all around um, the whole United States um, in the seventies and before that, um, that they would sell, you know, obviously to, um, you know, to um, everybody, <laughs> you know, the convenience stores, you know, grocery stores, wherever you would find them, your local five and dime, the corner shops. So this guy, his name was Phil, Phil Sealing, I think it was. Um, he had a, uh, a distributor uh, called, Seagate Comics, uh, one of the many, many regionals in the world, or in the world, in, in, the, in the United States. And um, he basically struck a deal with Marvel and DC and Archie and all these uh, distributors um, that he would ship their books directly um, from 
from them to to the um, to the shops. Um, there'd be a greater discount because they wouldn't be returnable, which was different than the the newsstand market. Um, it was um, they they could return the book, so they didn't get as deep of a discount. Um, but with Bud, with Seagate, you could. So what people were doing was um, getting the books from Bud from Seagate Comics for that deeper discount and then returning them through their local distributor um, to get that rebate back. So they'd actually be making money off of the distributor as well for those returnable books. And that's where they started doing the line through the barcode. Um, and then later that kind of evolved into like the Spider-Man head and stuff. Um, and that's kind of how the direct market started. But at, the, at that time, the direct market was responsible for uh, right about 98 to 99 percent of the the market for comic books um and that's because uh it was pretty much only seagate who um who had uh that sort of that region there um kind of transfer all the way through it progressively got to less and less and less until the late 2000s when you're looking at um single digits down to like 2009 uh, to like to 2013 was when Marvel ended. Uh, last year was when DC ended. But at that time, direct market is about it rough one uh, percent of the market. Okay, so if you think of this book, and I remember I looked it up, it had like a forty-two thousand print run or something. One percent of that was the direct market. And this is one of those. So you do the math on that. So super rare. Um, I think you guys, if you see them, should pick them up. They're pretty, pretty rare. Um, now all through that, it's always, of course, the higher grade um, new stands that are harder to come by. You know, um, the other one I got, uh, same thing. Uh, this is a new stand as well. It says it um, on it actually. I don't know if you can see. Will it show it? It's having a hard time showing up. Oh, there you go. Right there. It says newsstand. Um, so this is uh, Art Adams. Ultimate X, issue number two. Newsstand copy. Another one that's very rare. So I don't know in terms of like the value on them, but I just think it's cool to have something that's such a small percentage of that print run so that's cool um all right so we got uh i already have batgirl number one i could pull it out if you don't believe me um the book that is <laughs> um this is batgirl issue number two adam hughes here's issue number three another adam hughes and i do have issue four down in here somewhere um i found this no no this one i i paid Probably what market goes for. This is Justice. And I'll tell you why I bought this. I was looking for this. But I'll tell you why I picked this up in, in a second. This is a um, second print for Justice number two. Really beautiful cover. It's Batman. All right. Remember that cover because we're going to come back to it in a second. Um, so we'll go through. Oh, here's the issue four I found. This was 50 cents. Got to put it in a bag and board still. Do I have those here? Maybe I don't. I don't think I do. Um, I think maybe I showed them on a previous haul, but I did get the Superman and the Shazam that go with that book that kind of make a set um, for really cheap, um, which was cool. All right, so signed books. Um, one of the guys that was there was Dave Johnson, and this is a cover that he did. This is Spider-Man Deadpool. This is the hip-hop variant, of course, uh, paid in full. And uh, his signature there um, is right there. It says Johnson. He just signs Johnson. <laughs> um, all right, so depending... Okay, so Dupe says nice. Uh, depending on the comic, the newsstand can be worth up to double. Great example is Spawn number one direct. For, exactly. Okay, good. Uh, that's a perfect example. That was from like early early 90s, but yes, absolutely. Especially in high grade. That one is a good one to find with the barcode on it. Um, congrats on the new Stan Middleton. Thank you very much. Um, Kat Ryan says it looks awesome. Thank you. Um, assuming you're talking about the book. 
not me. No, uh, poor man's comic says I'm trying to get the newsstand for all the Marvel 2099 number ones. It's harder to do than I thought. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll be, but it's fun to find them when you, when you're out there and you're cruising through, just look at the barcode. Some of them will say newsstand, but some of them will just be absent of it. It'll either say direct sales or direct market. And that part will just be not there. Um, so yeah, just, you know, look it up. If you're interested in a particular newsstand, uh, look up the newsstand of it, study the cover and the difference between the two. So you know what to look for, because uh, frankly, a lot of shops are going to miss that type of thing. It'll be in there in the bin, um, not differentiated in any way, um, but it's up to you to, to pick out what the differences are and, and find it. So um, Silver Age Dave says he, he believes he has a bunch um, yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you have a ton of them. <laughs> you have a rather large collection, good sir. Um, cool. Um, DC Rebirth still has some new stand floating around. Um, I bet there are some like tucked in the back of some shelves at like Barnes and Noble or whatever, but I think it was, um, the end of the, the last one I got was, um, Batman 24. Um, I have a newsstand for that and a direct. Um, that's the last newsstand I was able to find from uh, from Barnes and Noble. But I was happy to get that one. So that was cool. Um, so I mentioned this one to you guys earlier. This is Catwoman number forty, the movie poster variant for one of the awesomest movies. If you guys like cars or car chase scenes, Bullet. This is the movie Bullet has hands down one of the best car chase scenes you will ever freaking see highly recommend it so there you go that's uh selena call and then of course uh dave johnson signed that so that's the cover that he did okay another person that i saw who was pretty cool um kind of quiet and introverted um so i think some people have said he is a little bit not nice but i think it's because he was not as outgoing as other people. Um, and that can kind of be taken as like, Oh, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to talk to you. Um, and that's Greg land. Um, and say what you want about Greg land and whether he traces or not at the end of the day, <laughs> I like his artwork, the faces, the, the characters and stuff. So, um, I had him sign this. Okay. Signed it up the side there. Okay. Really awesome. Psylocke cover. And I had him sign the Emma Frost. Another great cover. He's right there. Okay. Um, Silver Age Dave said, uh, books a million dollar bin. Yep. Mine doesn't have one, unfortunately. Um, C. Woodard says, Dave, I went to BAM today. Books a million. They actually had some of the fried pie books for a dollar. Yeah. Um, if you're... Uh, books a million is paired up with second to charles that's probably when you're gonna see like the the back issues and stuff mine is strictly a books a million so they do have the the bam fried pie variants they have comics but it's all the new comics um and then the ones that don't sell basically the new old stock is what they put into like the dollar thing with like the big red um sticker on it um so i i do see um some of those but for like back issues and stuff um, oh, I, maybe I misunderstood you. I think, yeah, so all of them have the dollars, but in terms of like back issue stuff, when I hear dollar bins, I immediately think back issues. So I think I, I misread what you were saying there. Um, so as like I was saying with the convention, um, they had Chris Claremont, um, Chris Bocciolo, they had to cancel. I think Chris Claremont got sick and that's why he had to cancel. So save the day, uh, Jimmy and Amanda. Um, but I didn't know that until I got there. So I wasn't prepared. I would have brought a bunch of stuff like the pro. I really want, I have a first print of that really wanted them to sign that. Um, but alas, I didn't. So what I did, uh, Frank Thierry was there. He's the guy who took over, uh, for Amanda on writing. Uh, I think it was with issue 35. Um, so he was there. I had him sign a book. I just bought a book from him. Cause I know Amanda on the cover A's does the um the cover art it's frank show on the b cover amanda on that jimmy doesn't do it anymore he's just kicking back with his margaritas you know in uh in uh, tampaville over there but so i was like 
should I have him sign this book? It's um, Harley Quinn issue 37. I said, should I have him sign this book or not? And he looks at me and he goes, I'll tell you what I'll do. And he did a remark for me on the book, which is right there. That's Jimmy, Frank's in the gold, and then Amanda Connor signed in the blue. So he didn't work on the book, but it's cool that he did like the remark there and stuff. So I was happy with that. And I really wish I had known that um, Claremont wasn't going to be there. I would have definitely brought more for, for these two, especially. Um, and then Frank, um, he's got another book as well. Indie book. That's pretty cool. Um, nice guy. Um, I do have a video up. So after this, if you want to check it out, it is kind of like um, some interview that talks to the Scout Comics guys. Frank uh, Ming Chen was there from uh, Comic Book Man. A um, bunch of other people. So I put together like a cool video. Um, I had fun making it. Um, but that'll give you a better idea of like all the people that were there. Hope Larson was there. Um, Ron Mars. Um, a couple other people. But the Scout Comics guys, they're super cool. I did. Um, I needed to get this um, signed. Um, it's Stabity Bunny issue number one. Richard Rivera signed it here. So that was good in the gold ink. Um, and I forgot that I had Stabity Bunny too. Or I would have brought that, but damn it. Um, they also had a bunch of the, the variants there, like the um, Clockwork Orange. Um, oh, God, I'm drawing a blank now. Donnie Darko, Spider-Man 300. Um, you know, they have these variants um, on their brain trust variants, they're called, and then some ratios. And then I got this for free. Um, this is um, from Scout. It's uh, Scout Comics Presents. Um, so this came out in January. This came out in the fall of 2017, and it has a preview of Stabity Bunny in it. So I know it's a preview type of thing, but it does predate um, Stabity Bunny number one. Now, I know that even prior to Scout, uh, Richard did have this as a self-published, um, just like... Um, just like Solar Flare, self-published, and then Scout picked them up. So, But anyways, uh, in terms of Scout's history with Stabity, this predates the number one. So that's um, Scout Comics Presents. There you go. So cool. And I, I did a um, good chat with uh, James Hake, who does um, who does that book. Oh, I, I was going to bring this for Chris Botch, though. Um, this is done by a local guy. It's a one-shot. It's called Morte. And there's no words in it. Um, no words. But it's cool. He um he his uh, pitch on it. He gave me a quick pitch, which is on that same video. He goes, um, the book is not about how to survive, but what like a zombie apocalypse, but what to do once you do survive. So there you go. Dun dun dun. Um, um so Cat Ren says, what does Connor charge a signature? The first three are free, and then I think that they charge like five or something after that. So, um, and then that, that's assuming it's not going to CGC. Um, I believe that they automatically charge <laughs> um, if they know you're doing, uh, like if you have somebody with you witnessing, they'll know. Which it basically you always do know. And they got them shirts, so you know. Uh, last time issue is free. Sometimes ask for Hero Initiative. Yep, uh, Hero Initiative is really great. Um, it's a... Uh, uh, great it helps out um, older artists who did a lot of work in the industry and got screwed over, whether they were not good at writing or their contract or whatever, um, whatever it was. You know, a lot, some of them you know need help, so um, it's cool that they they have that. And uh, Steve Borock, who I've had on the show, he actually um, is one of that that the leads for it. So pretty cool. Um, Horror Man Comics is here. Uh, all right, I got this is cool. Um, this was 50 cents. This is one of the few comic vendors that were at the show. Uh, this is Mystic Arcana, Scarlet Witch. I have the magic one. There's another one for um, Nico Minoru um, from Runaways. And then I believe there's one other one. So it's part of a set, um, but kind of a one shot at the same time. Anyways, cool, cool cover. 50 cents. I said, whatever. That's cool. Um, so this next book here, um, I know Doom has it. Um, I found it for 50 cents and you know me, I'm like, a you know, specking on the side. So I had to pick this up. 
This is X Force issue number one sixteen. Uh, came out in two thousand one. Uh, Mike Allred cover. This is Mike Allred. So some of the spec is on this guy right here, who looks like one of the guys in the Deadpool two poster in the back of the helicopter. So, um, but that's not the all of. So there's a couple other people there. One of them is the anarchist. Uh, another one is um, Zeitgeist. So look those up if you're not familiar with them. But this is also the first appearance of uh, Dupe, Coach, Battering Ram, Plasm, Sluck. Um, I said the Anarchist. Um, it's a it's full of first appearances. You get the point. La Noit is in it. It's a one and only appearance for uh, for that character. Uh, but this issue one sixteen is chock full of first appearances. Uh, a couple of them seemed like they will be in the Deadpool movie. So there you go. You get your dupe and all that. There you go. All right. And then I got a couple issues of, uh, of a book. And I forgot who did the damn... Hang on. I want to tell you guys who did the cover art on these. Because I think they're really great. Maybe you, Maybe you can tell me. New Mutants, it's a 2003 run, which only went for a few issues. I think it went um, for like 13 issues, um, as opposed to the next one that went for a good like uh, like 50 issues. Um, but I wanted to tell you, the cover artist on these, um, maybe somebody knows. Nope. Oh, you know what? Duh. Stupid. Josh Middleton. He didn't do all of them, though. Right, so Middleton did this one. Um, this is issue three. This is another Middleton. Um, this is issue six. So on this one, um, is this Middleton? Yeah, it is. This is also Middleton. Um, we got issue 10. So issue 10 is Chris Bocciolo. I could have had him sign it. Um, and then this is issue 12. Uh, a guy named Randy Green did this cover. There we go. So there's some more Middleton for you. All right. So that's it. That's my haul. Um, that's the new books, some sign books, convention stuff, original comic art, uh, convention pieces, um, a novel. Um, yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah, so Middleton did uh, the first few, um, and then it went to some others um, later on. Um, so, yeah, the first, I don't know, I want to say like five or six, definitely all Josh Middleton. Um, then it went to Bachelot, and then a couple other guys. So I really love um, these. I got to get some frames for that stuff, but I wanted to you know, definitely show you guys these. Um, beautiful, cool people. They all have dangly things off their heads. Maybe that's a thing for me. I don't know. That would be weird. Anyways, check us out Thursday night, uh, Comic Conversation. We're heading towards uh, episode 75. Holy shit, it's getting up there. Um, what are you talking about, Jason? What's Jason saying? Jason Smith, two covers. Uh, is Clayton Crane a good artist? Absolutely, he is a great artist. Um, I really like some of his uh, Spider-Man work. I believe he worked on... Well, he's done a bunch of recent stuff, obviously. But um, I like his work on Sp Spider-Man. Um, there's a cool one where um, Spider-Man's swinging and Mary Jane's like hanging off of his back and stuff. That's, that's a great cover. Poor Man's Comics says, Anyone looking for Sally Forth, number eight? Someone just listed two copies on eBay. There you go. Um, Jason, uh, Alex the Comic Quarter. Did I say hi to you, Alex? Hi, Alex. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, he says, Jason, that is subjective, but objectively, yes. So, yep, <laughs> there you go. Um, Joker M21, hey, what's going on? Nice to have you here. Uh, C. Woodard, Crane's X-Force run is worth checking out for sure. Yes, uh, absolutely, especially those bloody variants. Those are so cool. You guys got to check out those bloody variants if you haven't. Um Exile State Comics got the blue wrench going on. Uh, yes, they are. Look at new Batgirl covers for this week, Jason. 
but bam, there you go. Um, so as I was saying, check us out Thursday. We'll be back with another live show. Uh, Evan, the alien is here. Um, and that will be kicking off at eight 30 and oh my God, we have a lot to talk about. Um, we'll try to get through it pretty quick, but we do have some great topics are ready for you. Um, and hopefully we'll have a book to review, but we're going to save that, uh, towards the end of it. Um, and that's going to do it for this, um, kind of monthly, just me doing a talk, continuing the conversation here and um, I'll check you out in the next video. Thanks for stopping by everybody and I'll see you next video. <laughs>